So in the last video in this series, I conveniently left you all hanging there just as I'd managed to get Home Assistant up and running on my Intel NUC. Uh, well, certainly at the command line anyway. So in this one, we're going to carry on the process and get it all running in a browser. So let's get going. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. And yes, this is next part in the series of my going down the rabbit hole of uh, Home Assistant uh, on an Intel NUC. And basically uh, what I'm gonna go through with you is just the, the next stage of the setup process. And also some of the things that you should uh, probably go and enable or set up on your Home Assistant install when you, you get that web interface up and running before you really start uh, tackling to get things set up with your smart devices. So next you need to continue the rest of the setup process. You can do this in the browser, I'm doing this on a PC. Basically you just need to um, put in the, the URL that you've been given at the end of that install that was displayed on the command line. Usually it's um, you know, homeassistant.local and a, a port number on the end. And that, once you've entered that, that will then start the rest of uh, the setup process. And you know, it can take a few minutes to go and run through. So don't do anything with your browser there. Don't close it or anything like that. Just let it finish what it needs to do. And then when that's complete, you will then be prompted to set up your first user on the system, uh, along with an appropriate password. And then the next bit, you know, where are you located? Now, it's quite important. You'll need to, although you can change this later on, it's probably a good idea to specify where your home location is. Uh, certainly, if you're going to use any of the more kind of like advanced um, functionality within Home Assistant, it's good to set where your home actually is. So just you set that on the map and then you've just got a couple of parameters to do with um, kind of like your um, your measurements and things like that. So um you know, set those up appropriately for your location in the world. And then you basically, you just click on the, the next uh, button. I've just skipped through that. And then you, you get a screen about some uh, integrations that Home Assistant has found. Now, I skip past this. Uh, you, you don't really want to be doing anything with that at this moment in time, in my opinion. Uh, you can do all of that later on within the web UI. Now, in my opinion, one of the first things you should do once you've got Home Assistant up and running in your web browser is to take a backup of your installation. Uh, this could well save you an awful lot of pain going forward once you start playing around with Home Assistant. So, you know, really straightforward process. All you need to do is just click on the cog on the left-hand side in the menu bar and just go to Add-ons, Backups and Supervisor and uh, then just click on backups at the top and um, you see in the bottom right hand corner you've got to create backup button so just click on that give it a name and uh, you know make sure it's full backup you, you don't really need to make sure the backup's protected in any way just click on create and there you go you've now got a backup of your home assistant install uh, you can click on that and click on these little dots here and you can download that backup so um, basically it'll be a, a tar file which is just a compressed file and you can put that somewhere else then you can uh, you know keep that safe so the second thing you need to do is make sure your home assistant install is up to date now i've got two updates ready on my install um, so that's just the difference in time between me kind of doing the first install and carrying on the rest of the config configuration um, but basically you know just again click on the, uh, the the configuration the cogs and then you'll you'll get notified if you've got any updates there so make sure you do those um, you know, you can click on the details of these updates you can find out what's in there it also gets you into a good routine because some of these updates will at some point in time uh, change the way things work so you know it's really important that you read the information that is available for you uh, on these updates so the next item on the list is the enabling of advanced mode. Now, when you first get Home Assistant installed, you're probably going to play around with Home Assistant and maybe even try and get a smart bulb up and running with, uh, within it, you know, creating your dashboards and everything. And, you know, these are fairly 
straightforward basic things to go and do but before too long you're going to want to dive into some of the more advanced functionality of home assistant and that's where you're going to need to enable this switch and you know if you go off and look at uh, an awful lot of videos on youtube uh, about home assistant you will see um, you know that people will be accessing functions that you won't have access to if you don't enable this option so all you need to do is go into your user profile in the bottom left hand corner and you will see there that there is an option for the advanced mode now if you go into into settings into your configuration into settings you know if you go into that before you enable advanced mode you'll see it's a very very basic screen that you've got there once you've enabled the advanced mode you get an awful lot more functionality and options available so we'll go through those in another video um, but for now i suggest it's probably the right point for you to enable that particular setting in your install now one of the really great things about home assistant is the extensibility of the actual environment and home assistant does this by having uh, add-ons that you can install within home assistant uh, there's a lot of kind of like standard ones that uh, are available as part of the system and then there's what's known as third party ones so these are developed by in individual uh, people that are contributing to home assistant so um, one of these that I think you need to enable now is uh, Samba Share and the reason why you're going to need to enable that now is that um, that will give you a couple of things really and, and the main one really for me is that it gives you access to uh, specific folders on your home assistant install from something like your Windows PC so you know this will make things like getting access to your backup files an awful lot easier and also being able to edit configuration and copy things around and stuff like that so all you need to do you just go into your configuration and you go into your add-ons option and um, you know it will normally list out what add-ons you've got installed but you just click on the bottom uh, the button in the bottom right hand corner and uh, you may well see the Samba share icon uh, there on the list but you can just type that in and uh, you know if you if you can't see it and then just basically set that up so when it's installed and enabled you can click on the start button and you'll immediately get an, an error uh, about configuration on it so you can click on the little uh, link there and it will allow you to edit the configuration for the Samba share now you're going to have to stick in a password for that but once you've done that and you click on start it'll start running for you now the upshot of this is that on your Windows PC you'll be able to open up Windows Explorer, put in the IP address of your home assistant server and there you go, you know, you now have the files and folders which are available as part of the share that you can now access. Now out of the box home assistant will allow you to do an awful lot of configuration however there are some things that you're probably going to need access to via terminal and SSH so again this is another add-on to install this is another thing that will appear in the menu bar on the left hand side and basically you just go back into your configuration go back into add-ons again you'll see it in the list there terminal and SSH and you just go through the same kind of install process as the Samba share and uh, you'll need to put in a password for this as well and yeah start that as a as an add-on and you know in future videos you know we'll talk a little bit more about this but for now um, that's probably just best left just enabled within your installation and my final one for today's video is some kind of text editor now at some point in, along your journey with home assistant you're going to have to interact with its uh, con configuration files its yaml files as they're known and you know these are quite common in software development and they have a very particular structure to them and um, you know you you're going to need to kind of follow that structure now you know they they kind of have configuration it's a it's kind of a hybrid of configuration and almost kind of like instructions um, that you want uh, the thing that processes those files to actually achieve so you have two options here you, you probably have a couple of other options depending upon how you do it you could take the yaml files off the server using your samba share and go and use something like notepad plus plus to go and do that um, it's a bit of a faff i've done that previously you know you mess around with 
permissions and all that kind of stuff. Or you can install uh, a couple of editors that come as part of the add-on uh, repository. So, um, you know, if you've ever worked with, uh, you know, kind of like web development, then uh, you may well be aware of something like Visual Studio Code, um, which is a fairly lightweight um, web editor. And, uh, you know, that will display uh, YAML files all, all neatly formatted and all color, uh, color coded as it were. And no surprise, you know, there is a nice add-on uh, to go into Home Assistant that will um, basically work exactly the same way. So um, again, you go into your configuration, you go into add-ons and um, you know, just search for uh, visual and it, you know, it will come up with the install there. It takes a little bit of a while to install this one, but you know, once it's done, you just um, start it. Um, if you don't want something uh, quite as complex as that, you know, it is a little bit heavy as an editor because obviously it does, does an awful lot. Uh, there is kind of like the standard file editor that comes with Home Assistant. Again, you just do that in the uh, add-on installs and, and just go and choose uh, file editor. That will still format things for you, uh, but it is just a little bit more basic. And it may be when you're starting out that that is the one you actually use but either way you're going to need to have something to be able to edit these files going forward okay guys so that is my initial setup process of my home assistant install i think i'm ready to go if you think there's something else i need to have installed or something else i need to do let me know down below in the comments would really appreciate your thoughts on that um, you know if you've enjoyed this video then don't forget to hit the like button it really does help um, you know, if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, then hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next installment in this series. But as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.